Hi, I'm Carrie Ann Palumbo, registered dietitian nutritionist from Griffin Health, here at the Griffin Center for Healthy Living. Today I'm going to walk you through how to read a food label and explain what everything means. Marketing claims on packages like natural and clean eating can be misleading. As a dietitian, I always get asked, is a specific food healthy? Today I'm going to teach you what to look at on the food label and how to answer this question for yourself. Although everyone's nutritional needs differ, by understanding the food label and its information, you can make healthier choices for weight management and reduce your risk of chronic disease. A large part of healthy eating is learning how to interpret the food label to make an educated decision for yourself on the healthiest choice. Currently, you may see two food labels that look a little different or provide slightly different information. The FDA has created a new label and food companies are still in the process of adopting the new requirements. Today we will discuss the new food label as the transition occurs. And I'll be honest, the food label can be tricky. When I show a person a food label, the first thing they usually look at is the calories. I want to emphasize the importance of first looking at the serving size. I'll say it again, the serving size is the most important thing when you first look at a food label and it's right at the top. Without the serving size or the amount of food you're eating, the numbers below it are meaningless. So remember, if you eat twice as much as the cup or ounce is listed for the serving size, you actually have to double the nutrients and calories listed below. With the new food label, the serving size should reflect a more accurate portion of how much we eat, but not necessarily the recommended amount. And the serving size and calories are printed in a bigger, bolder font. The next item on the label is total fat per serving. Keep in mind, if the item is in a bold font and there are indented items below it, the indented items are part of the bold item. For example, saturated or trans fats, which are listed below total fat, are included in the total amount of fat. The type of fat is important when choosing healthier foods. I recommend avoiding trans fat and saturated fats and instead choose foods higher in mono and polyunsaturated fats to decrease risk of cardiovascular disease. Macronutrients are what make up a balanced diet. These include fat, carbohydrates, and protein. So the next thing I look at is total carbohydrates. Remember, the items listed below it make up the total carbohydrates. Dietary fiber is a very important component of healthy choices, and three grams or more is considered a good source, with a recommendation for at least 25 grams a day. Most Americans fall short of the recommended amount of fiber, and these foods with fiber help you feel full, promote heart health, help with blood sugar control, bowel regularity, and even weight management. A new category on this food label is added sugar, which is the sugar added to a food during processing. This is something you wanna limit, as added sugar has been associated with weight gain and insulin resistance. The less, the better. The American Heart Association recommends less than six teaspoons, or 25 grams, as the label will have it, per day for women, and less than nine teaspoons, or 36 grams a day for men. It is a better choice to eat carbohydrates that naturally occur in foods like fruit, sweet potatoes, and whole grains, as opposed to this added sugar. Protein is an important part of a balanced diet and helps build lean body mass. Although people's protein needs vary, I generally recommend up to 30 grams at meals and aim for 10 to 15 grams of protein with snacks. You'll note cholesterol on the label. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this as dietary cholesterol doesn't affect our blood cholesterol or when you hear of someone having high cholesterol. The latest research points at the saturated fats and trans fats as increasing our blood cholesterol. However, I do look at sodium. Many people I find look at sodium content after their doctors tell them to follow a low salt diet. The American Heart Association recommends less than 2300 milligrams a day or less than 1500 milligrams a day if a person has high blood pressure. Most of the sodium we eat comes from packaged or prepared foods as opposed to the salt shaker, so it's really important to pay attention to how much salt is in your food. Another part of the label is the percent daily value, and this can be confusing. It's based on the amounts for the whole day if someone eats 2,000 calories a day, and so it may not be that helpful if you're eating more or less than that for the day. 
However, a very general rule of thumb, if an ingredient has 20% or more as the daily value, it's considered a high source of that nutrient, and less than 5% would be considered a low source. So things like saturated fat and sodium, you want to choose lower sources, while things like fiber and protein, you want to be a high or excellent source. Next, you want to look at the ingredient list. All the items that a food has are listed with the ingredient of the largest amount first. Choose foods with whole ingredients and at least the first three ingredients to avoid foods with a long list of ingredients that are difficult to pronounce. If you are trying to avoid an ingredient for an allergy or an intolerance, this list is also helpful. I've been asked, do I always look at the food label when I go shopping? And guess what? Yes, I do. Without it, I can't know what I'm eating and make healthier choices. So, now that you know what everything means and how to navigate a food label, hopefully you'll start reading labels too. And the more you do it, the easier and quicker it will become.